just like a dead leaf. Oh, wow! I'm Jack Randall. Oh, bum! See that? That was crazy cool. I'm finding every animal on the planet. Whoa. I'm in the wild. I think it's down here. Whoa, please move! Up close and personal. And a massive snake! OK, there's a scorpion on my arm. This is just remarkable. Look at that. Reticulated bifin in the water. Come on, let's go. Another day, another location. We're in the rainforest. It's a new area and it's a new place to explore. My tactic, as usual, is to get out there and start looking at the habitat. Recce missions often yield the unexpected. Today, I'll be meeting an animal so well disguised, it's as if evolution is just showing off. The thing is, during the day, the nighttime animals are sleeping, so I'm not actually looking for movement. I have to look in their hiding places. So places like this, buttress roots, and these cave systems here are perfect. There'll be animals seeking refuge in there. Yes! Woo! This is a cat snake. It's actually quite closely related to a snake that I know really well in Australia called the brown tree snake. They're rear fanged, venomous snakes. They've got fangs right at the back of their mouths and uh, they secrete venom into those teeth. They're not, they're not grooved, they're not hollow like a lot of the highly venomous snakes. And then as they bite down and chew, they're putting venom into their prey. And you can see why it's called the cat snake. It kind of has that kind of cat look about him, especially those eyes, vertical pupils. A lot of nocturnal animals, snakes, they have those vertical pupils, but actually at night they widen out. So it's actually a bit of a kind of misnomer that nocturnal animals have vertical pupils. They do during the day, because the light is, is, is actually shutting off that iris, so that not much light is coming in, because they're extremely good at seeing during nighttime their eyes are actually really capable so as they as that grows they can see really well at night really being quite well behaved let's keep going let's release this one up back on the tree beautiful all right we can continue going that way it's gonna be a bit of a challenge see you mate This is just remarkable. There is a praying mantis underneath this leaf. We've seen the orchid praying mantis. Oh, look at that. Upside down. And looks just like a dead leaf. It's a dead leaf praying mantis. We managed to find the orchid praying mantis, the really amazing adaptation to blend into its surroundings on an orchid. Orchid praying mantis. It's so well adapted, looking just like an orchid, like a flower. Those four back legs look just like the petals of a flower. This looks just like a dead leaf. I cannot believe it. With my very own eyes, seeing a dead leaf praying mantis. Oh, wow. Wow. Just like all praying mantises. They have those praying arms, which they kind of pull backwards. They're ready in that ambush position to strike forward. 
Look at the detailing of this praying mantis. It really is something out of this world. You would think, honestly, that somebody has drawn this as a kind of piece of art. This is a living animal. It really is gobsmacking. Because look at this. Look at the leaf. Look at, look at this here. It looks just like a leaf, a dead leaf. Got completely the veins and it's not even like symmetrical. That's a dead leaf. And look at that. It's even got like kind of like the, the, the rips and tears of a dead leaf in there. I can't believe you. I can't believe that could actually exist. Why does the dead leaf mantis look like this? Now, unlike the orchid praying mantis, is actually attracting insects to come along. This is actually more standard of an ambush predator. It's actually blending in to look like the surroundings so that its prey, it might be a fly, insect, something else like that, that comes along would not see the dead leaf. You see the stick insects and the leaf insects, they're also incredible aggressive mimicry. But the difference between a stick insect and a praying mantis is that the stick insect only eats leaves, it's a vegetarian. Whereas the praying mantises, they're all carnivores, they're predators. So they, there is a big difference between them. They're very, very calm. I've always found that the praying mantises, you might, they might look scary, quite intimidating, but they're actually really quite gentle. They don't mind at all being on your hand. In fact, even if I would try to put this dead leaf mantis back onto her leaf upside down, she'd probably struggle and want to stay on my hand for a bit longer because they actually really do quite enjoy the company, it seems. It just shows there's unexpected things always around the corner in the rainforest and you try and get to the hardest places and really if you push yourself you'll find the most incredible things just keep your eyes peeled because there are absolute gems like this the dead leaf praying mantis is just exceptional in terms of adaptation in terms of its mimicry of its environment the leaves it looks so remarkably like a dead leaf it's so unbelievable the deadly praying mantis has made my day yes sometimes animals take things to the extreme they might be the most massive or the most venomous. The dead leaf mantis wins the prize for the best disguise. <laughs>